What's up everybody, it's the Wizard Lizard, back again with a new video, and today I'm going to show you five, that's five very underrated creatures from my personal opinion in Ark Survival Evolved. This is my personal opinion, so don't really hate on it, but you can if you want criticise. And if you know your creatures, if you think are underrated, comment them below. Let's get straight into it. If you enjoy the video, like, share and subscribe. And let's just get straight into the first creature. The first creature I'm going to show you is the Diplocorlus. Now you're wondering where these might be found. These are found in the swamp biomes. And in water you can ride them as like a mini portable like speedboat scuba tank thing. As you can see here. They're quite useless on land. Really slow, really buggy, prone to getting like hit with by other creatures and you can't do nothing with them. But in water they act as like a personal primitive scuba tank. As you can see here, there's a little manta ray. Swim quite a bit slow but they can go side to side quite quickly in water and um, they can go quite deep as well like any other aquatic creature a nice little thing about it is you see the oxygen meter here you can draw oxygen from them so when you're underwater you just press forward to take oxygen from them and that like just gives the air bubbling you replenishes your oxygen and I recommend using this for stuff like when you like mining underwater for oil or silica poles going hunting for them or if you're out like taming an aquatic creature like a Mosasaur or a Dunkasotus, stuff that's like under the bottom of the water, that shark's being a pagan. But yeah, they're not really good in combat, like I'm trying to get him to stop here because he'll take a lot of damage and he'll probably die from this Megalodon as he's a high level. But they are quite a smooth creature that does need protection, so please take like another aquatic creature that can do damage once with them. And um, they really make us a good substitute for um, a scuba tank and are really early and primitive. And that's all you really need to know about the um, Diplocorlus. And I think it's really underrated. So let's go into the next creature. The second creature which I think is underrated is the Paki Rhinosaurus. Now these guys that can, can be found among Triceratopses and stuff in like the rivers and the jungles and that. But they are a bit rarer. So they'll come more hard to find. But they are quite a bit uncommon as well. So you can find them in most places. So... You can tame them, uh, knockout tame, and um, yeah, you can't shoot them in the head because it'll just bounce off and no torpor damage will be inflicted. But how is you, what's their like special ability, you're wondering? So like if you go up to any dinosaur that's wild, I don't think it works on like player tames. If you go up to dinosaurs like this, you get them to attack you for a while. And if you like press LT or something on the pad or on the computer, whatever you're playing, um... They actually activate ability which can stop dinosaurs from attacking you, which is really, in my opinion, amazing. Because, like, if you plan, like, PvE or PvP, like, if you're transporting dinosaurs, like, to bases and stuff, and you just take one of these with you and you get sparked by, like, a higher level dinosaur, it just stops them from attacking you. Although, I don't think it works on, like, um, Rexes or Giganotosauruses. Sorry for the little stutter there, just trying to think in my head. But yeah, they are quite a good dinosaur. Also here, you can have like a, a aggro one as well. If you press on the right stick, it causes dinosaurs to aggro. They attack not just players, but they can attack all of the wild dinosaurs as well, causing them to go into a rage and start attacking. So yeah, that's all you really need to know about the Paki Rhinosaurus. They're quite OP, good for like moving bases around and defending your dinosaurs and for like calming down other dinosaurs and getting them to incite each incite attacking onto the next dinosaur. Animal number three we have is the Calcotherium. Personally, my favourite out of this list, as it's in no particular order. These guys are super powerful, and I literally sweated off them a lot when they first came out. They have a lot of good capabilities. They can actually move quite quick if you boost up the movement speed. Good stamina mount. They do quite a bit of damage as well. So their attacks are: they can do a large knockback on most creatures. I was testing them out earlier. Let's do it on this. Oh, just done a nice knock back there into oblivion. But they can do a good knock back on like most creatures. I was testing it earlier, as I said, on Brontosaur and actually did a knock back, back on that. It was quite small, but it did knock them back a bit. So these are good for knocking back like moderately large creatures who are after you. They're good for PvP as well, as they can use the catapult throw here, but only on wooden structures and thatch. I don't think they can do it on stone structures. 
but they are, can do quite a considerable amount of damage with the catapult throw. So I recommend for raiding lower bases. They're good at like killing sheep here. So I'm going to kill a sheep here. Nice bit of powerful attack. I haven't pumped up his damage or anything. So I'm just going to like, I might just pump up his stamina a little bit because his stamina is quite low. But most of the attacks do consume quite a bit of stamina, especially the catapult attack. So let's try and get this catapult attack in motion. Yay, we got him. Wiped out that sheep there. What else are the Calicotherians good at? If you go up to a bush or anything, I think these are just like potatoes here. I don't think they can harvest potatoes. Let's just check his stats and just pump up it a bit in stamina. Ah, I think that'll do a bit more. Well, a little bit more here. That should do. So if you go up to any bush or something, they don't harvest vegetables, but they can harvest berries and stuff out of bushes. And they can also actually farm a considerable amount of thatch as well, which is quite good if you're like one of the farm thatch at an early stage. And yeah, that's all there is about the Calico Ethereum. They're really powerful, strong. You need beer to tame them, just to sneak up behind them and tame them. Don't run up to them, they'll aggro on you. And yeah, enjoy your Calico Ethereum. They are really amazing, to be fair, and very underrated. On to the next dinosaur. And the next creature we have is the Tapajara. I think one of the most beautiful dinosaurs in the game. Look how beautiful he is. And one of the most OP flyers you can actually have in the game as well. Sorry for the bit, little bit of lag there. They're actually quite a fast flyer, as you can see here. Nice, fast, and they're very good at maneuverability. Still beautiful on land. Quite a fast flyers. And, yeah, they're very good at purpose for, like, having three riders on there and you can pick someone up as well so four riders and shooters and boom land on vertical surfaces and then you and two other people on the saddle can shoot from a vertical vertical sides you can't shoot from behind you though that's a bit too overpowered yeah that's good for conflicts in the redwood forests or on vertical surfaces and you can snipe them from far away in raiding they can move side to side strafe backwards as well so their maneuverability is way better than their Pterodons, Argies and Quetzes as you can attack dinosaurs and just move around quicker and faster as I'm attacking this Toronto here. Nice maneuverability to attack them. Going round side to side or trying to avoid damage off them. And yeah, I don't have to go around and just go in for like a dive bomb like you do with the Pterodons. They do a bit less damage than the Pterodons though, but they still do quite an amount of damage. You see here. Just the shit out of this Brontosaur. And yep, boom. Good for, I think they're good for carrying mounts as well in battles, as they are like kind of OP for that. You can have like four people at once, I can think you can carry on there. Three on the saddle, a rider, two shooters, and you can pick someone up as well with the Tapajara. But let's go with like whatever you pick up on the um, vertical surfaces. And that's all you really need to know about the Tapajara, another one of my favourite dinosaurs in the game, and very OP. On to the next dinosaur. And so, the final dinosaur I'm going to show you in today's video is the Perlovia. These are like rodent marsupial creatures, and to be fair, these are actually really strong and really useful. As you can know, they are good at attacking creatures, quite a, do a bit, considerable amount of damage. And the best used is like landmines, as you can bury them underground. As you can see, they're buried here, there's the little dirt on. But other players and dinos can't see that. So if you bury them underground, Set them to aggressive, and when you're getting raided, they'll just pop out of nowhere and like attack your dinosaurs and other people. They have the capacity to take people off mounts and other players off mounts and stun them. And literally, after they've taken them off the mount and they're stunned, they will literally rip them to shreds. So it's really good at um, taking that, stopping raiders from getting through and defending your base as a landmine. But also, as he does a lot of damage here, there's a nice new t like thing I do. Like I use them in bases to stop as like mini vaults, as like burying them underground. They can't be seen. And you can put all your valuable stuff in there. To do this, I'll just pump up the health and weight of the Perlobias, and for the landmines, I'll pump up the health and damage. And they're both like quite OP. So like the vaults can hide your valuables and storages to stop raid, so you don't lose a lot of stuff. And then the landmines are good for defence, for just literally ripping donors to shreds and people but that really explains it all for the Perlovia they're quite an OP creature in my opinion really underrated you rarely see it <coughs> sorry 
you rarely see them being used in like bases and that in PvP or PvE. But that's all for today's video. I'm starting to cough to death, so I'll leave you there. If you enjoyed it, give it a like, share it, subscribe, and I shall see you all in the next video. I want to thank you all for this journey so far. Here's to the next 100 odd subscribers. I'll see you all in the next video, my friends. And salute.